Well, thank you. I think in hindsight it was a mistake to get Dina to introduce me. She was so good that I'm not going to look so good, and that probably wasn't a good strategy. But uh, it was great that she did. As she said, uh, we met each other in Washington, and uh, she did great service to the country, both in the White House and in the State Department, and has continued that arc of doing great things at Goldman Sachs, uh, leading Goldman Sachs in lots of different ways as they focus on impact investing and seeing how to take capital market skills to important public policy issues, and they're really doing amazing things, in addition to uh, leading programs like 10,000 Women and 10,000 Small Businesses. Uh, she's done extraordinary things, and thank you, Dina, for being with us tonight. Also, too, um, let me just say uh, congratulations to the fellow honorees, Ken, Jeff, Ron, Beth, and subsequently Paul. Uh, it's great to be here and to be in your company, and it's an honor for me. You know, uh, when we began the evening, um, uh, it was really a poignant moment for many of us in the room just to remember that John Whitehead, who was so important in so many things in our lives, isn't here. And we could do no better than to kind of close our eyes tonight and imagine how John lived his life and think about how we might raise the bar on how we might want to live our own lives. I sure think about it. I joined Goldman Sachs in November of 1976, the same month that John Weinberg and John Whitehead became head of the firm. And for really most of my career, they set an example of what you should want to be and how you can always do better. And I feel very grateful that I had that opportunity. It's terrific to be here as part of the Foreign Policy Association evening. And um, I think that um, the idea of understanding and bringing discussion and, and, and really ideas to the fore is one that's appealing. I thought I would, what I might do for just a few minutes tonight is to continue on a theme that, that several others have mentioned, and that is to talk for a little bit about our industry, the financial services industry, and how we can think about some of the issues that we're struggling with uh, in our country of growth and inequality, but I think also maybe to put a little a bit of a different lens than is the current rhetoric on the issue. You know, uh, we're eight years now removed from uh, the recession, and then we've enjoyed some of the recovery but sometimes I feel as though the conversation is as if we were still in 2008, and that's just not the case. And while it might be politically expedient, and I understand the reason for the discussion, it is troubling to me, and it also isn't just about my feelings or the feelings for our industry. I think it also doesn't recognize the fact that part of the traction that we need and the, the ability to move things forward in the country can actually be driven by the financial services industry. And so I think to take a second to just get that in the right frame is important. Um, you know, it's been six years since Dodd-Frank was passed, and yet you listen to Washington and it seems as though nothing has changed and we're kind of stuck in a mind warp of the 2000, 2008, and 9 period. Um, and, and I think really that when you listen to the rhetoric, you pick your favorite word, whether it's rigged, crony, greed, or fraud, those are the ones that are every day uh, applied to our industry, and I really don't think it's correct. Now, certainly there are people that did wrong and there are people that could have done better, but that's not the right way to think about things today. And as I said, it's not about my feelings, it's about the fact that it's not recognizing what our industry can and should do to make things better. Um, and I believe that what we have to do is imagine how can our industry come together to try to complement what I always think of as the holy trinity of a good economy, and that is one by growth, full employment, and price stability. That should be what we'd want for all of us. And I think that we need to recognize that, that moving forward requires us to take a more positive perspective and understand. And let me just try to respond to some of the criticisms of the day. First, I think that despite the perspective being presented, the financial services industry is unarguably safer and stronger than it was in 2008. Much progress has been made. Our banks, all 31, have passed stress tests, and they're on the front foot with regard to the ability to extend credit to worthy borrowers. Dodd-Frank has brought significant openness, and where historically uh, about 15% of the financial services derivatives were publicly traded, now it's almost 75%, so clearly that's the case. Second, I believe that the industry is more competitive, that there are all kinds of new business models, and we're seeing all types of new people around the world, and the competition is, competition is great. 
Uh, people sometimes talk about the fact that uh, the financial services industry is more concentrated, and I think that's a bit of a, a, a misapplied lens. The reality is that in the crisis, it was public policy to try to attach weaker institutions to larger institutions. That was the public policy of the Federal Reserve and the Treasury. We thought that was the safe policy to ensure stronger institutions. The result was our large and stronger institutions became larger. That's not a surprise. That was the plan. Today, the reality is that many of these institutions now are changing their business models, business models and shrinking, and as a result, I believe the trend of larger institutions will actually move the other way, and there'll be more and more competition as we look forward. So when I try to talk about this and think about it, I say, what do I think that, um, that people are healthy, the institutions are healthy, and the, and the financial services system looks, looks broader? What do I believe that people should be thinking about? I believe, and I'll only have three, and then uh, we'll move on, but that issue number one is we need to build an agile, responsive regulatory system that safeguards the economy, but also understands the role that risk plays in promoting growth and innovation. Number two, the second big policy challenge is to balance consumer protection and vigorous financial markets. The reality is that there always should be, should be risk being taken, and some people will be rewarded and some people will be disappointed, but to recognize that that should be the plan. The third policy issue is to support innovation and competition within financial services. We see business models changing all the time. You pick your, pick your favorite industry, but they're all changing before our eyes, and I believe we should believe and expect that the same type of innovation will benefit the economy, the consumers, and new institutions as that changes. So let me just conclude by saying thank you for the recognition on behalf of all my colleagues at my firm, and also too, as I listen tonight, for those people that have been so helpful to me throughout my career. Like everyone in the room, I'm sure we can all imagine people that helped us and benefited and gave us their guidance and shared their perspective, and we all benefited greatly from that. And so for all of those people who helped me and all my colleagues today, I say thank you very much, and it was a pleasure to be with you this evening. Thank you.